Nearly 60 years ago, the Fathers of the Second Vatican Council issued a groundbreaking document on the Catholic priesthood. Hi, I'm Monsignor Peter Bui, and I'd like to talk to you about Presbyterorum Ordinis, the conciliar decree on the ministry and life of the priests. The document provides a more extensive understanding of the ministerial priesthood and gives fresh insights to the priesthood of the laity. The Council Fathers taught that the whole Christian community is a priestly people. They remind us that baptism incorporates each one of us into the body of Christ, into a new life entrusted with the same mission, that is, bringing Jesus Christ to the world and the world to Jesus Christ. However, the priesthood of the lay faithful and the ordained priesthood differ both in essence and degree. Through the service of the ordained priest, Christ himself is present in the church as shepherd, high priest, and teacher. Through the sacrament of holy orders, priests are consecrated in such a way that they can render our Lord Jesus present in the celebration of all the sacraments. Every time a priest offers the sacrifice of the Mass, he is taking the place of Christ. He is acting in persona Christi. So that through the priest, the Lord Jesus again and again offers himself to us. This is my body, this is my blood. Every time a priest prays the words of absolution in the sacrament of reconciliation, he acts in persona Christi, so that through the priest, Jesus forgives and strengthens. But one of the most important points in this document is stressing the close cooperation of the priest with the laity to build up the body of Christ, which is the church. The Fathers of the Council underscored the concept and practice of shared responsibility. Priests were not meant by Christ to shoulder alone the entire saving mission of the church toward the world. Such words as cooperation, collaboration, consultation, and collegiality emerge from the church's vision. Priests must acknowledge that there are many things that they don't know. They are encouraged to gather together wise and knowledgeable persons and strong consultative bodies in both parish and diocese. The wise priest welcomes expertise of the laity, particularly in the management of the church's temporal affairs. Many Catholics have a mistaken idea that the Catholic Church means either a building or an institution made up of an active group, the bishops and other clergies who provide a service, and a passive group, the laity, as customers. People who view the Church in that way see their role in it as something like that of a motorist in a gas station. They drop in once a week to get their tanks filled, and when they need a tune-up or an oil change, they go to confession. Otherwise, they are content at taking a back seat and letting others do the rest. The church always considers that lay people have a special task of evangelizing the secular world, and this makes sense. Most Catholics, the vast majority, are lay people. They have jobs, friends, and families. They can witness Jesus Christ on a daily basis, silently or out loud, directly or indirectly, by their words and actions. All members of the church are important. All are active. None is passive. All of us, as members of Christ's body, 
or join in intimate fellowship with one another. The church in America is now facing a crisis of faith, mission, and leadership. And the task of renewal of the church falls to both you and me and all priests. And the heart of renewal is pretty straightforward. Do we really believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior? Then we must live it. Do we really believe that the Gospels are the Word of God? Then let it guide us and we must live it. St. Catherine of Siena once said, Christians, if you truly believe and live your faith, you will set the world on fire. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's set the world on fire. To read the full document, Presbyterorum Ordinis, click on the link in the copy below.